Welcome everyone, Houston Math Prep here in our introductory video in our Ordinary Differential Equations video series. First we want to introduce to you what differential equations are. So a differential equation is just an equation that involves derivatives of one or more functions. Here you can see several examples. You can find a derivative, at least one in each of these. Sometimes you'll have just a first order derivative. You may have a higher order derivative. We have different notations here, but each of these contains a derivative somewhere, and so these are considered differential equations. In a differential equation, we begin with information that tells us about how something is changing. We seek information about the original function or formula that represents that change. This equation is giving us information about the rate at which y is changing depending on the value of t. Here you can see this is the derivative of y with respect to t, and the formula also involves t. When working with differential equations, we want to be familiar with the different derivative notations. So in my first row here, I have the Leibniz notation, where it just looks like a fraction of differentials, dy dx, d squared y over dx squared, that's the second derivative, d cubed y over dx cubed for third derivative, etc. We also have the Lagrange prime notation, so y prime being the first derivative, y double prime the second derivative, y triple prime the third derivative. Once we get past three primes here, we denote the fourth derivative and beyond with the order of derivative in parentheses. So this last expression here is not actually y to the fourth, this is actually the fourth derivative of y. And one maybe less common for you to see would be the Newton dot notation. The Newton dot notation is typically seen in science and mechanics, and it's done generally with respect to time. So y dot is the first derivative with respect to time, y double dot the second derivative with respect to time, etc. We also, once we get past a triple dot, have a similar notation like we have in the Lagrange prime notation, where we just simply write the number above the dot instead of having to count a dozen dots above our y. If you're coming to this video series and you've already seen partial derivatives, you've taken some multivariable calculus course perhaps, you might have seen these notations before where we have the partial derivative of a function with respect to x or y, or we use the subscript notation partial fx, partial fy, etc. We won't actually be solving any equations with these types of derivatives in our video series here. We'll be focusing on ordinary differential equations. Ordinary differential equations involve ordinary derivatives with respect to only one independent variable. Partial differential equations, which we won't be doing in this series, involve partial derivatives, and those are with respect to multiple variables. One major way that we classify differential equations is by the order of the differential equation, and the order of the differential equation is just the highest order of derivative that you see present in the equation. So if you look at our first example here, dy dx plus 2y equals sine x. I only have one derivative term here, dy dx, and that's a first order derivative. So we would say that this is a first order equation. If we look at the next one down here, y double prime plus 4xy equals e to the x. This is the only derivative term there. It is a second order derivative, so this is a second order differential equation. If we look up here, y triple prime minus 6y double prime plus 9y prime equals zero. Many derivative terms, but if we look here, this is the highest order of derivative present in our equation. That's a third order derivative, so this is a third order differential equation. And if we look at this last one here, a little bit tricky, we have dy dx squared. This isn't the second derivative, we just have the derivative squared. So dy dx all squared equals 4x, since this right here is the highest order we have present, the square is just an operation on that derivative, then this is actually a first order differential equation. When we talk about solving a differential equation, so if we have a differential equation of order n, whether that's first order, second order, third order, so n is the number of our order, a solution is a function that satisfies that differential equation on some interval i. So in general, we don't just want a point that is a solution to a differential equation. We will want some type of a curve, some type of a function that satisfies the differential equation. And if we're trying to solve an order of an equation that is n, we'll also need to be able to have its first n derivatives continuous on an interval. So if we're solving a third order equation, for example, we'll need to make sure that its first three derivatives are continuous on an interval that we're defining its solution when we get a solution. 
If we want to show that something is a solution to a differential equation, we just do what we've been doing with showing something is a solution ever since algebra. We will simply plug that information into the equation and show that it gives us a true statement. So in our example here, we want to show that the function y equals e to the 5x is a solution for our differential equation y prime minus 5y equals 0. Now in order to plug everything into this equation and see if we get a true statement, we'll need all of the information we need. So we will need y prime and we will need y. Now we already have y because y is given to us. We're showing that that is our solution. So we'll need to know information about y prime, right? So we already know, for example, that y is equal to e to the 5x. So I can plug that in there, but I need to know y prime. So I'll first figure out what is y prime. The derivative of e to the 5x is going to be 5e to the 5x. We'll get multiplied by 5 from the chain rule. And now I have y prime, and I can plug my information in here and see if I get a true statement. So if I have a y prime, that's going to be 5e to the 5x minus 5 times y, so minus 5 times, now plug in y, and y is e to the 5x. You can probably see that this is true, right? So we end up with 5e to the 5x minus 5e to the 5x equals 0. And that's a true statement, right? Because this term minus this term would be 0. We get 0 equals 0, and that's a true statement. So this y equals e to the 5x is a solution to this differential equation y prime minus 5y equals 0. When we talk about finding a solution, it's possible that more than one solution exists depending on the information that we're given. So we want to figure out how many solutions exist for the equation dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, equals 2x. How many solutions are there? Well, if we think about the derivative of y with respect to x is 2x, to get y, we would just need to think what is the antiderivative of 2x. And the antiderivative of 2x is actually x squared plus c. Right? So y equals x squared plus c would have the property that the derivative of y is equal to 2x. And if we think x squared plus c as a function, c can be some arbitrary constant, right? It could be 0, it could be a positive number, it could be a negative number. There are many, many functions that fit this y equals x squared plus c. This is a family of solutions where the graphs are all parabolas and they are centered on the y-axis, right? If c is positive, then my vertex is above the origin. If c is negative, then my vertex is below the origin. So this is really an infinite number of solutions to this problem. When we talk about a family of solutions like this, we call this a general solution, and it describes the family of functions that all satisfy the original differential equation. So let's say we wanted to find the single parabola that goes through the point 1 comma 4 here, right here. So how would we do that? And that is the difference between a general solution and a particular solution. So we talked about a general solution is all of the functions that satisfy the differential equation. A particular solution would satisfy the differential equation dy dx equals 2x, but it would also have the property that when I plug in 1 for x, I should get 4 for y. And we call this condition, I wanted it to go through 1 comma 4, we call this an initial condition for the differential equation. And when we solve differential equations with initial conditions, then we will start to get what's called particular solutions. So let's go ahead and take the extra step and figure out which of these parabolas actually goes through the point 1 comma 4. So I know that my general solution is y equals x squared plus some c. And I have my condition y of 1 equals 4, okay? And what that condition says is when x equals 1, we want y to equal 4. And so what we'll do then is simply plug in that information into our general solution, and we'll find our particular constant that works for that. So if we plug in, we get 4 is equal to 1 squared plus c. And if we subtract 1 from both sides, we'll get that c is equal to 3. So now if I take that information for the constant and put it back into the information I had for my general solution, then I get this particular solution, y equals x squared plus 3, and that parabola does in fact go through the point 1 comma 4. Okay everyone, thanks for watching our intro video to ordinary differential equations. Keep watching our series to learn more about these. We'll see you in the next video.